trade war fears spooking stocks today, sending the Dow down almost 600 points at its lows. Our Eamon Javers is live at the White House with the very latest. Eamon. Yeah, hi, Melissa. White House officials saw that Bloomberg headline this afternoon that spooked the markets about the possibility of the president going all in on tariffs from China and imposing tariffs on all of the remaining imports from China if he doesn't get what he wants from these negotiations with the Chinese over the next month or so. Uh, but officials here insisted today uh, that there was nothing new in the president's thinking, emphasizing that he's been, this has been effectively a live threat since July or earlier in the summer when the president began to talk about imposing additional tariffs. Take a listen to what the president said to Joe Kernan back in July, essentially the same thing. Here's what he said then. Would you ever get to 500, though? It, well, I'm ready the, to go to 500. With, we've got with the midterms on so the horizon. I did, I did, what's I the stock market? Uh, well, where to go I back? actually think that's, well, if it does, it does. Look, I'm not doing this for 20%? politics. I'm doing this to do the right thing for our country. We have been ripped off by China for a long time. And I told that to President Xi. So the president there saying he's willing to go to 500. That's effectively all of the imports, $500 billion worth of imports from China to the United States. The president saying back in July he was willing to put tariffs on. Here's what he said about it in September as well. And if there's a retaliation against our farmers and our industrial workers, our ranchers, if any of that goes on, we're going to kick in another $257 billion. Uh, and that'll be also a 25% we don't want to do, but we probably will have no choice. So, Melissa, the White House saying today there are no new developments here in the president's thinking. This has been a live threat to go to $500 billion uh, in tariffs, and, and the president considers it to continue to be a live threat right now. And the question is whether or not he's ever, ever going to execute on that threat. It's been pending for several months now. What is the threshold at which the White House is going to make the decision to go ahead and impose those tariffs? That is an unknown at this point. So the markets got scared again today by something that had already been out there, floated out there since the summertime. Right. Um, but at the same time, Eamon, as we draw closer to the end of the year, it seems like there are fewer and fewer opportunities for the U.S. and China to actually talk. The next one could be the <clears throat> President Trump, President Xi meeting uh, right. on the sidelines of the summit next next month. Are we getting any sort of developments about that if there are preliminary talks going on between uh, the two countries? Well, the assumption was that the Chinese, and this is just an assumption, conventional mm -hmm. wisdom in Washington, that the Chinese really wouldn't want to make any moves before the election because they wanted to see if the president will be weakened politically in next week's midterm election. So the assumption was they wouldn't do anything before early November. And then now the focus is really on that end of November time frame at the G20 in Argentina. Uh, the two men, we are told, are likely to meet, uh, but we don't know necessarily what the status is of negotiations behind the scenes, whether they're uh, prepared to unveil any new concessions on either side at that meeting. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that one. And uh, we'll be down in Argentina covering it. It should be a fascinating session in the G20. Yep. Sure will. Eamon, thank you. Eamon Javers you reporting from the White House for us. And I think Eamon laid it out really well. But this had been a live threat since July. And yet the markets, this tells you we're having the debate about whether there's fear and panic in the markets. As soon Thanks. as that headline hit, we saw the markets go lower. There was fear about yeah, this no actually question, coming, right. Those becoming were absolutely right, correlated. not yeah. threat to an actuality. Right. I'm, you know, I'm hoping this sort of plays out like uh, NAFTA or USMCA, whatever they call it now, you know, where he was kind of, you know, was a tough negotiator and then ultimately Leanne worked it out. This is a more complex and a much bigger deal. But um, I don't know. I think that he he... I think that his interest in having the market do better and the economy do well is going to be very important in the negotiation. I, I just think that this is not your father's trade dispute. This is this is all about, you know, technology. This is about technology transfer. It's about technology theft. It's about, uh, you know, global security. Who's going to control the Internet? Who's going to control uh, cyberspace for the next century? And I don't think we're going to give a whole lot of ground on that. And, and therefore, I'm not sure we should. Um, therefore, I, I do think that this is something that gets a little bit uglier. Meanwhile, again, I point to the macro data around the rest of the world that we are seeing an impact from trade. And yet we're not really seeing it in our data yet. And that's the big concern. Although Leesman had this interesting story where they scoured through all the company conference calls from earnings season. They yeah, found that 19 percent mentioned tariffs negatively on the company conference calls. That's I mean, if you told me that a fifth of the you know, the fifth of companies reporting it that had a conference calls so far in earnings season said that tariffs were negative. That's a pretty big number. Yeah. And again, the president may be correct. We, maybe we've been getting off ripped off blindly for the last three or four decades. It might be true. 
I have no idea, but there are ramifications for that. But it's interesting what Karen said, you know, maybe with the market going lower, and I'm not suggesting this is what she meant, but implicit in that is that if President Trump wants to make a deal, there's a deal to be made. Mm -hmm. Why would the Chinese make a deal at this point? Now our market's going down as well. Their midterm election's coming up. There's a going down yeah, more. Uh, you know what? But they're, listen, I all I know, we think that they're the same as us, and they look at winning and losing the same way we do. I don't think they do. I think that's right. I also think they have a lot more levers to pull.